we've just talked about um, how to get Fred's bottom a little bit more warmed up and we've talked about using our fun free sex toys that are always accessible with us, our fingers. Um, we're going to talk about insertable objects that go into the butt that are specifically designed for prostate play. One of the main things that is that needs to be communicated when we're engaging in anal play is that if something goes into the bottom it has to have a stop point on it because the rectum, as fabulous as it is, can be a big black hole that will suck things up into it if you're not using something that's safe. And so there's some safety in terms of toys. And something that will stop a toy from getting sucked up would be a base like this. And these are called flanges. And there's different types of flanges. These all provide a way to stop something from going inside the bottom. So when you purchase toys for prostate play or any type of butt play, you want to make sure that it has a flange on it if it's going inside the bottom. Now all of these toys that we have listed here are different types of prostate toys. And prostate toys all have a general theme going on. They may be made of different materials, they may be made of things that are soft or hard, um, some may vibrate, some may be smooth, some may be textured. But they all have a similar theme in terms of the fact that they all point forward. They all point forward because when they're in the body, it, the prostate gland is located towards the tummy. So if we look at a side view here of Fred, and something was going inside of his butt, just like that, when this toy fully was inserted, this is his prostate gland right here. This is the thing that... I talked about feeling like a walnut. So this goes towards his tummy, which would be located here, or towards the penis, however you want to think of it. So prostate toys are all going to point forward. They should generally, because the prostate gland is in about the same location for most people, not for everyone, but for most people, they should generally not be longer than your index finger. So when we put things into the bottom, we have to realize that we're going to lose about an inch because of the sphincter muscles. So if something goes into the bottom, it's got to go through here, and then it has to go through two sphincter muscles before, which would be to about there, before it starts filling up the rectum. So you would take your finger and you would place it a couple inches above the base of it, and you would get an idea of if it's the right length. And this is important because there are lots of toys that are sold that um, can be designed for prostate stimulation, but if they're too long, it's going to completely bypass the prostate gland. So if you notice, these toys all have generally about the same size. They are made of very different materials, however. This is a stainless steel prostate toy. Um, and so stainless steel allows for hot and cold play, it provides a pulling down action inside the bottom, um, and it's extremely smooth. Stainless steel is also very pretty. Um, so, but some people can be intimidated by its weight. I like to think that stainless steel is one of the nicest things to play with when we're engaging in anal play because there's no drag to it whatsoever. There's no resistance. So it's one of the smoothest things that someone can place in their bottom. Now these two toys are made by the same company, Nexus, and you can notice that there's a few different things going on. This one has a more intense curve, a smaller head than this one, so this may be easier to get inside of the anus than this one because there is a difference in terms of the width and the length. This one is also thicker, and when we are thinking about putting things into the body, we want to think, how, how thick is it? So this toy is almost two fingers width-wise, and so that would be, imagine two fingers going into the bottom. Is that something that you're comfortable with, or are this two fingers something that you're like, I'm not ready for that yet, I'm more of a one finger person? Or you could be looking for a toy that's three fingers, and then this is definitely not your toy because it's too small. So this toy, at its widest, is less than two fingers, significantly. So, especially up at the beginning, and it gradually gets bigger to the widest point, which is significantly less than two fingers. So this might be a better toy for a beginner. 
However, this toy has lots of ridges, and so these ridges are going to cause very intense bumps as it gets placed inside of the rectum, especially on the anus. Some people really like this type of texture um, because it gives an added stimulation, and other people like something that's just very smooth. This ball is located right here, right here. These are both stainless steel balls. And so their design is once they're in the bottom is they would hit against the perineum right here. And with a little um, movement as it's in the prostate gland, this ball will roll against the perineum or the taint, whatever you want to call it, the grundle. So the ball can give some extra stimulation. This company is called Nexus. They make medically safe materials and they also make uh, prostate stimulators that have vibrators that come inside of them. So you may like prostate stimulation that has um, a little bit of a buzz and so they also have toys that come like that. So those are th three different types of toy materials. This is I would say the Anna Rose, this is the toy that started it all for giving prostate stimulation a good name. Um, this is a medically made toy. It was designed for medical use for prostate cancer survivors. Um, and the company found that the men were not returning the toy when <clears throat> it was time to. And when they started asking questions, it was because of the fact that the men were saying that they were having the most amazing orgasms when they were using this toy. And so thus prostate stimulation started to get a good name and this toy was created. So this is the Anarose and the Anarose is designed to be placed at the beginning of the anus and for the person to do muscle contractions. So we're going to pretend this is, is an anus right here in my hand and what the person is to do is to place this prostate toy right at the opening of the anus and contract their sphincters back and forth, back and forth. And the contractions of the sphincters will actually force the toy to gradually go in on its own. So this is really a self-use toy. After 10 minutes of continuously strengthening your um, sphincter muscles, which is actually really good for your health, the toy will nestle itself right on top of the prostate gland. And then you can choose to leave it there, you can choose to uh, masturbate, you could choose to tap it with your finger to get some extra stimulation on the prostate, you could choose to take a little vibrator and put it against the base to give a little bit of vibration against the prostate because this toy doesn't come with a vibrator. And some people like vibration on their prostate. Now when we're using prostate stimulation, it's important to know that sometimes guys will lose their erections when they're playing with their prostate. And this is completely normal. This is the way that the body responds. Um, it's not something to freak out about. It's just part of the course. And so to embrace that and you know, when you lose your erection, remember that half of the fun is getting it back up. So it's not something that you should be cause for concern with. Although if you want to reduce that from happening, stimulating yourself um, with your hand or having your partner go down on you or jump on top of you, somehow playing with your penis or your balls um, will decrease the chances of the erection being lost. And then this is Lilo. And Lilo is one of the newer types of prostate toys that has come out. Um, Lilo is made of silicone, so it is a toy that can be boiled. It's a soft toy, unlike all of these, which are hard types of toys. This is a soft toy, um, so it has a little bit more give to it. And then it's got this handy dandy little finger holder right here, so you're not going to lose it if you're using it on yourself or your partner. It's kind of like a really big ring that you can use. Um, now this toy is significantly thicker to start off with. So this could be difficult for someone who's a beginner because this is two fingers widthwise going into the bottom. So the person would need to do a lot of breathing in through their nose and out through their mouth in order to get this toy in. And then it narrows out significantly at the base, which is important because for some reason people don't realize that make toys, when the toys are in, and an orgasm is about to happen or contractions start to happen, 
the body will try to push it out and the narrowing actually keeps it in the body easier than something that has a very wide base. So something of this size may pop out of the body a little bit easier than something like this. So you're looking for something that has a big difference. Lilo is getting a, uh, Lilo's toy Bob, this is Bob actually, is getting a lot of press as being a really great prostate stimulator. So in terms of some of the people's favorites, these two toys tend to be the, um, the number ones right now. Although a lot of people are, are enjoying Enjoy's toys because you can actually wear them outside. Um, their band right here is designed to nestle perfectly in between your butt cheeks so you can wander around and have that secret little surprise in your ass that nobody knows about. So these are three types of prostate toys, specifically designed for prostate toys. This is a type of toy that I've talked about in the past, not designed for prostate stimulation, but can be used for prostate stimulation because it's very long. Um, it's longer than six inches, so it's safe to go inside of the body because it's pretty hard to get something more than six inches accidentally caught and, and left inside of your rectum. It's got a crook going on, so that means that it can be designed for prostate play. And it's got a vibrator, so if you're looking for a toy that has a vibration for prostate, this is a good option. It has a wide head, so starting off, this is a big toy for popping into your butt right away. Um, there's no gradual increase, it's just like wham, there it is. It's, it's here, it's ready to go. And then you can slowly turn the vibration on and you can increase it for more or less stimulation. And so when it would be in Fred's bottom, the person could press down on it, they could do small little circular motions like that, they could just give some firm pressure um, and leave it there as they're playing with other parts of Fred. And for someone who is not necessarily comfortable with something going into their bottom but they're looking for prostate stimulation, there is another option for you. So this is a vibrating toy that's got a curve, so it can be used for prostate stimulation, and it's silicone. The silicone is very hard, it's very firm, so it's going to be useful for the type of play that we're going to be engaging in for prostate. This toy is made by Lilo, which produces, um, I like to say green toys, so they're rechargeable, there's no batteries in them. Um, and it, they light up also, so if you're fiddling around in the dark under the blankets, you can kind of see where you're going when this lights up. So if we, Fred, let's say, you know, Fred didn't have a good diet the day before, and he's not ready for something to actually go into his bottom, but he wants his prostate played with. What we can do is we can take two fingers and place it on the perineum and feel for where there is a slight indentation. You'll feel a slight drop right there. Think of it as like you're looking for the, um, the easy button, okay? And what we would do is that indentation, that slight drop, is going to be the hot spot. And so we would take the toy and we would press very, very, very firmly on where that indentation is. And if you watch here on Fred, you'll notice slightly that things are moving upwards. And so it will press on the prostate gland in a very indirect manner. So if someone's not looking to have something in their butt but they want prostate play, stimulating the perineum with firm, firm, firm pressure is an easy way to get about. And that is going to cover our lesson on prostate play.